All right, hi everybody. John Meadows here with the boss, Dave yes, Tate. The boss. El Jefe. El Jefe. Um, so we're getting ready to do um, a push workout from our training program today. And what you'll see in a training program is you'll see two types of push workouts. You'll see one that we call it the dynamic uh, push workout, and then we have a max effort uh, workout. So they're very different in structure. But today we're doing the dynamic workout. All right, so the first thing you're going to notice if, uh, on the push workouts is a warm-up sequence. And yes. The warm-up sequence is it's a band pull apart, it's a plank, and it's hanging leg raises. So yes. why did you come up with those three exercises for our warm-up? Okay, it's those are used, that warm-up's used for most the, most of the sessions throughout the whole program. And you can say it's a warm-up, you can say it's activation, you can just say it's a little extra work this being a power building type program one of the concerns that we spoke about at the very beginning is we're going to be taking a lot of lifters that may not have power lifting experience so they may not have the experience of how to lift a one rep max safely they don't know how to stabilize it they don't know how to absorb the load things like that <clears throat> so where do we stick in movements to help build stabilizers they otherwise wouldn't have in there right so you could also say this is prehab in a way so the hanging leg raises for one thing because it's a hanging obviously the um, you're stretching the hip flexor so you're opening the abdominal wall so when we do those we want straight legs and yes. not the leg? okay well if they're if they're strong enough you know then yes but if not they can do bent knee bent knee okay right all i'm worried about honestly is just the hanging Part to open the hip flexors up because what happens with a lot of strength athletes is they get all bound up gotcha. through here because and a lot of bodybuilders too because you do a lot of machine work you do a lot of seated work how much standing work are people actually doing right. Right. and then when they do standing work like a pull or a squat are they actually fully extending in any way gotcha. so I just want that full extension in there for that reason just mainly for the hips and the side of, secondary impact of that is the abdominal work which a lot of people just generally skip. Right. So you stick it in there. Right. The band pull aparts, more for shoulders, you know, the, the rotator cuff, all, all the stabilizers in the rear upper delts, back, right? The rear yeah. delts, all that stuff. Yeah. And then the planks, the same thing, teaching them to keep a rigid torso when they squat, when they pull, and yeah. when they do other movements. So as long, I mean, if they're doing the planks right, it's, it's kind of hard to do a plank wrong, but there are ways to do it right to do it wrong, right? Mm -hmm. You can make yep. it a lot harder by pulling your toes and elbows together, but even if you just chill out and hang there, they still got to keep that tight, yeah. which yeah. is what we want them to do when they squat. So it's, it's kind of like a sneaky way to stick in things that I know they otherwise probably wouldn't do. When you yeah. do this, you want to keep your back flat. What you don't want to do is go into like a pike position like this here. So if, if this is all you can do, because that's where you got to start, that's fine, but slowly bring it down until you're in that flat, tight position, drive the elbows towards the toes. So our first exercise today is dynamic benches. We're using 55% of our one rep max on these. If you don't know your one rep max, don't kill yourself to find out. In the program, we have a calculator. You can pick three reps, five reps, eight reps, what your max is, like say with eight reps, it'll calculate it for you. We have a really cool calculator in there. It's actually a, a ton of calculators and we pick we pick one of the numbers um this isn't for hypertrophy this is high velocity training this is to develop force rapidly this is very good for powerlifting and been able to produce produce force fast honestly honestly it's really good for athletes too so dynamic benches these are meant to be done fast we've got 30 second rest breaks programmed in here if you got three people like we had today, it kind of it's perfect. You just go bang, bang, bang. If you got two people, you might have to time it so you don't go quite so fast. You might go a little too fast. Um, and as we go, Dave will show you the grips we're using. But we're doing nine sets of three. We're 55% of our one round max. The goal is speed. If you're using weight so heavy, it's slow. Then you, that's not the point of this. Remember, later in this week we got a max effort workout. So do not you follow what we're saying, okay? So get set up but don't take it out, right? So squeeze like you're gonna do that, make sure everything's set up. All I want you to do is keep your elbows where they are. Try to pull the bar into the J-cup without taking it out. Like you're oh. doing a, like a pull, see that right there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, relax, do it again. Yeah. See that? Okay, this time I want you to do that and then take the bar out after you do that, ready? Do it, go. Ooh, yeah. See, 
now this is all stable. See the difference? Yeah. Yeah. So you're gonna use you're gonna use the J cup as just like a like a cue, right? Just to boom, are your lats tight? Yeah. Because when you go like this, you're not tight. And you take it out, and all this is not stable, right? And you're going to be trying to press with speed. So this has to be tight because yeah, yeah, yeah. you're going to be trying to generate force. And the force of the barbell going up is also going to be generated by you driving down. Yep, yep. And if this is all loose, come up again, keep your lats loose. Like here, if this is all loose, look. Yeah. Right now, do it like a pullover. Uh -oh. See, now I can't. See, now when I move you, your whole body has to move. Yeah. Right, relax that again, but just like hold that like you were holding the bar. See? Now, this moves, that's shoulder damage, right? Yep. You get the lats tight again. This moves, it's not shoulder damage. Because yeah. that won't move, because yeah. the barbell is also going to be pushing weight down yeah, on I you. I feel a big difference. Okay, if for some reason your bench is a peg that where the bar is going to be way down in there, all I'm trying to have him do by pulling it into the J-cup is to flex his lats. So the bar can still be back there, and you just consciously think about doing a pullover first, then take it out. Yep. Okay, <clears throat> one thing you guys want to be aware of is when you put the bar back into the bench, just rack it straight back. Don't look to the side when you rack it back. So keep your eyes focused on the bar and just straight back into it or use a spotter. So I can do about 350 on my bench. I know, nothing impressive. 55% will be a little bit over 190. We're going to use 195. And Brett and I are both going to use that. And James is going to use... We're going to say he's raw at about 450. So if you put him at 55%, that puts him around 240 to 250. So he'll be putting quarters over top of um, well, over what Brett and I are using. So these are 25s. These aren't 45s. So I'll be using, like I said, over 195. And James will be using about 245. Right. All right. Set number one. All right. We're going to use three different grips today. It's going to be a wide grip, a medium grip, and a close grip. It's going to be three sets with each different grip. They can change it however they want. Okay. So where do you want me to start? Just make sure it's even, that's fine. Do yeah, go it. pinky on the ranks. Pinky on the ranks? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Hold it, let it settle, settle, go. Three, boom, 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 one, up, up. Lock them out, there you go. All right, so we went a little wider. So it's a little bit wider grip? Yeah. <clears throat> Hit it. Okay, we're closer, changing the grip. There you go. Hit it, hit it. All right guys, something else that's important with the dynamic work and the max effort work as well, but I actually think it's really more important with the dynamic work is to make sure when you grab the bar, you're, you're, you're gripping the bar, right? Even if you use, a, I don't wanna get into the thumbless thing, just wrap your thumb around, right? If you're using a thumbless, it's a different conversation, but dig the grip in hard and then wrap around. Just don't grab lazily because it's 55%. You gotta grab it super tight because you're gonna try to launch it like it's 100%. One thing that's really key on this is you to get the max benefit out of this, you have to push the bar up as fast as you can. It's not gonna be real heavy, but it doesn't matter. Push it as hard as you can. That's the whole goal. Maximal recruitment, maximal speed. Um, and also, it's not gonna kill you. Don't start adding sets yet. You'll see the sets change as the program progresses. So don't add to it, do it as written. It's written with that many sets for a reason. So I remember the first time I did those dynamic speed benches. So you guys took me over to London Groveport Road, 665. Yep. We were in a garage and I remember there was three benches. So your first bench had the top four guys, the strongest guys. And the second bench, you were probably on the first one. Mm -hmm. The second bench had the next four. And then the third bench had the, la the weakest four. And I was literally number 12. Mm -hmm. like, 12 guys were allowed to bench in there, and I was number 12. I barely well, it was, it was the 500-pound-plus bench, the 400-pound-plus bench, then everybody else. Yeah. 
So I think at the time I was doing a little over four, but I fell out into the weak group. Mm -hmm. Because Joe McCoy was in there. He was the 181 pounder, and he was benching more than me, and mm -hmm. I was the 220 pounder. But I was the weak guy. So mm -hmm. I remember that. I remember that garage. It's interesting that um, that you were allowed to go out there for one thing, because because <laughs> I'm so weak. Well, no, it's when <laughs> when I first came to Westside. It was actually before I moved to Columbus, and I was making trips up. Louie told me to come up to bench, and so I came up, and the bench was on a Sunday, so I went to their gym which on the time was on Demerst and it was still a commercial gym. And he had a back area that was for the powerlifting that had um, police tape over it. So you couldn't go back there unless you're there. So I am there on Sunday and I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. And a small group of guys came in and they weren't the guys that I knew from the meets. They were just these other guys. And I'm like, well, what the hell, you know? And then Doris comes in and I'm like, I'm supposed to be here to you know, bench with Lou and everybody. Like, oh no, they don't bench here, they bench out you know, Tim Van Horn. So I'm like, I don't even know who Tim Van Horn is. I, I don't even know what this is. So then Chuck come in later because they did their accessory work. And I come to find out I'm not allowed to bench out there because you need a 500 pound bench or an elite total. And I had both, but I didn't do it at Westside. Uh -huh. So even when I moved to Columbus, I wasn't allowed to go out there until I had a 500 pound bench while being in Westside. So I jumped in a meet real quick you know and and did the 500 so i could go out there to van horn's bench, but that so louis had a lot of things like that yeah. to where you kind of had to earn your way into different things so even when you were out there there was the the 400 pound bench which was in the middle then there was a bench 500 were over here and then the others which is the elite lifters were out there so you had to earn your way out there then there was kind of the benches that you were in. but the benches were mainly because it was speed work yeah. so you had to move fast yeah and the most people we would ever have might be five yeah. So you wanted this, the, the bar was always moving because other people changed the weight. So you yeah. had somebody behind, one person on each side, the lifter, and then somebody and in waiting. Rotate. So it just moves, moves, moves. So yeah. five people, you're still getting probably 30, 45 seconds. Okay, slide incline dumbbell. As you know, we love the slide incline. We did two feeder sets of five reps to get to our top set, which will be eight reps. So you want a hard set of eight, and then we're gonna do a drop set. So we'll do a hard set of eight again cut the weight about 30%, go to failure. Uh, notice we have some shiny new dumbbells today at Elite. And these things are really heavy. Oh, that burned. There we go. There we go. Good control. Shoot. Good control. Three. Four. Come on. Five. Come on. Six. Come on. Seven. One more. Okay, drop. Drop it. All right, 105. 105. Back down. Back down. Back down. 105. Okay, wrap them out. Okay, here we go. Come on. Come on. There it is. There it is. There it is. Just keep going. Smooth. Smooth reps. Clean reps. Clean reps. Come on. Good. Come on. Good. Come on. Go. One more. One more. Up. There you go. Good set. That's it. Nice. So we're moving on now to High Incline Smith. Oh, by the way, do not be, uh, don't, don't think I need more chest work. Remember, there's another chest work coming later in the week that's a lot more volume. So do not go, oh, that's not enough for my chest. I need to do more. Don't you worry, be patient. So now we're moving on to the high incline Smith and we're gonna do a few feeder sets and then we're gonna do a hard set of eight and we're gonna add a little bit of weight. We're gonna do a hard set of five. Now, 
Before we start the set, we're gonna hold the bar for a two count at the top. And then after our last rep, we're gonna hold the bar at the top again for a two count before we rack it. All right, the reason we're doing the two second hold at the beginning of the set and the two second hold at the conclusion of the set is for, for multiple reasons. It's to help build the stabilizers a little bit. Granted, it is on the Smith machine, so you can kind of negate that one a little, but it's still practicing being able to do that because when you start doing true max effort work for max singles, you can't treat those weights like you would a set of 10 or the way a lot of bodybuilders would where you just take it out and start. You gotta take it out, kind of let the weight ground a little bit and absorb the weight into your body. You gotta remember if you're gonna lift bigger weights or maximal weights, you have to stabilize the weight first, then you have to absorb the force before you can produce the force. So just by sticking this part into the program, it's teaching the lifter to, to begin to stabilize and to absorb that force. Okay, one, two. <clears throat> All right, so we did a 45 and 25 for uh, eight, and now we swapped out the 25 for 45. So we had two 45s on each side. This is a really cool Smith machine. It's old school. This is a Texas squat bar, and there's no counterbalance on here. So this, <laughs> this is really heavy. So now it should be a very hard set of five. Okay, we've moved on to Y raises. We want three sets of 12 here. Uh, make sure you're pointing dumbbells up at 11 o'clock and one o'clock. So not out to the side, not straight out in front, somewhere in between. And your shoulders will be fired up after you do these. All right, so in the program, we wrote if you have shoulder issues, but really, probably everybody should do these spider crawls. Dave has mentioned several times the need to have good stabilizers, particularly in this kind of program. And I learned these from you. Yes. So how do you guys come up with these? You just get sick of doing band pull parts over and over <laughs> and over. You gotta come up with something else. So yeah. one day I just, I actually started one day, I just put the band between my wrist and grabbed each side of a power rack and just walked it up that way. And I thought, well, I can kind of cheat. So what if I went against the wall and just walked across yeah. that? And then it just lit my shoulders up. And I knew that's pretty much what we needed to yeah. do. Yeah, well, these are, I found that when we combine the over and backs mm -hmm. with these, like people's shoulders always get better. Like it's amazing how their shoulders feel better. So these are great. Yeah, so we do three either. sets here. <laughs> now go up above your head and down below your waist. Up and down is, is one rep. So you basically do three reps. You go up, down, up, down, up, down. And that's one set. So three sets, just like that. Next up, um, we're gonna do what we write up as dual rope tricep extensions. Now you can see one of these ropes is longer than the other. So make sure you check the length of the rope. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use this little contraption, which is absolutely fantastic. So four sets of 12 here, pin your elbows in your sides, full extension on your tricep.
All right, now we got our tricep kickouts. It's kind of, kind of like a dumbbell line extension. Um, go ahead and kick it up. Now, when you come down, you want your elbow to be in and take the dumbbell down to your shoulder. Now, just kind of kick it up right there. Right there. See, see how he's dropping into it right there as opposed to coming behind his head? It's just a subtle change in technique, but it really puts a lot of stress on your tricep. Just like that. We call these dumbbell kickouts, but it's really just a modified line extension. Just remember, right into the shoulders, you really open up the belly of the muscle and then kick it up. We're gonna do three sets of eight right there. And your triceps will fatigue pretty fast. I mean, if you think about all the stuff we've done today that involve triceps, it's a lot of tricep work. All right, so that's the workout. Now, uh, what I want you all to be careful of is don't add anything to this. Like, don't start adding stuff to it because we've built in some real aggressive Progression. progressions <laughs> into this. So don't don't be tempted. You're going to see more stuff coming at you. We're building up as we go. Yes, yes. So stick anyway, to the plan. stick to the plan exactly how we've written it up. And that's it. We'll see you next time.